In the third part of this series on the book of Revelation, we saw the trumpet judgments. These trumpets were found in the seventh seal that was opened. We saw things dramatically get worse than what occurred in the opening of the seals. The trumpet judgments brought death and destruction and we saw why the great tribulation is not a time that any of us desire to live through and why we have such an urgency for not only ourselves but our family and friends to make things right with Elohim. We ended part 3 in Revelation chapter 9. This is where the 5th and 6th angels sounded their trumpets. The 5th angel brought the locusts from the bottomless pit that tormented all that were not sealed. We saw the 144,000 of the children of Israel were sealed. And then the 6th trumpet brought the 4 angels who killed a third of mankind. These are horrible events that will occur. But the thing is that there is still more to come because those that were not killed from the 4 angels still did not repent. We still must see what happens. And this is where we are in chapter 10 of Revelation. Now before we get into the book and start to read, there is an important point we all must have in our awareness when trying to understand the book of Revelation. There are two realms. There is a physical realm, which we all see very clearly, but there is also a spiritual realm. This is what we do not see with our physical eyes. We may be able to see the manifestation of spirits and angels through their effects on the world, but we do not have eyes to see what is actually manifesting in this realm. As believers, we should never fear what goes on in the spirit realm, because when we are born again, our spirits are reborn, and we now have power in the spirit that we can engage in. This is why spiritual warfare is so important. So while demons and spirits can be a scary thing because of what we see in horror films, a believer should never have fear because we have power over the enemy. Now what's important to understand about this is that what happens in the physical world is often a result of what is happening in the spirit realm. A lot of the imagery you are seeing in the book of Revelation is what is happening in the spirit realm. And that's why the imagery can throw us off and confuse us. It's because we are trying to correlate a lot of the imagery to the physical world. Don't do this. And if you read something in Revelation that throws you off or confuses you, move on from it and pray about it. It may not be the time for you to understand what you are trying to grasp. The Father has given me understanding in increments over time. It did not come all at once. As I gained one level of understanding, he then provided more. I never try to force it because this is where false doctrine can seep in and then that belt of truth that we wear in our spiritual armor gets looser and we lose power. So don't force your understanding in this book. I also do not claim to have complete understanding of this book. I wait for revelation just like everyone else. This is why there could be a long gap in between making this revelation series. I want to feel led in what I'm communicating. If you feel that you have been given a stronger understanding on something, Please state it in the comments in love. This is about understanding and edification. Sometimes there are things that maybe we are not to understand at this present time, and we will see exactly that in this next chapter. So let's continue to read and pray and let the Holy Spirit have his way. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 10. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of Elohim would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. 
So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Okay, so after the sixth trumpet we saw in Revelation chapter 9, we see a mighty angel come down with an open book. Now this is not the same as the scroll that was unsealed in chapter 6 in part 2. This scroll is very much like the scroll Ezekiel spoke about in his book. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9 through chapter 3 verse 3 says, Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat this scroll, and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly, and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? The events in Ezekiel chapter 2 and 3 occurred soon before Elohim's judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. This is right before the captivity by Babylon. So in chapter 10, as the angel came down with the book, the seven thunders uttered some things that John wanted to write. But a voice from heaven told him not to. He said, in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of Elohim would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Do you understand that there are still mysteries of Elohim that have not been revealed? There are still unknowns that have yet to be declared. If he wanted us to know these things, then he would have had John reveal them. The mystery of Elohim, which is truth that has not been revealed, will be revealed and finished as the final half of the tribulation develop. But much mystery remains that will be understood only when the events take place. So John was told to go and take the book. Then the angel told him to eat. As words of judgment, the book was going to make John's stomach bitter. In the same way Ezekiel's spirit had become bitter in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 14. So John now was going to continue to prophesy. And that leads us to chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court, which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Adon was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days, and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from Elohim entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. 
In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Adun and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before Elohim on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, We give you thanks, O Yahweh, El Shaddai, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of Elohim was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquake, and great hail. Now this chapter starts off with John measuring the temple of Elohim. I do not believe it is an actual physical temple, because there is no prophecy that he desires another temple to be built again. The third temple will be a desecration that the Antichrist will use to exalt himself as God. So I don't have much clarity to provide on this temple. But what he says about the Gentiles aligns with what we find in Luke chapter 21 verse 24. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Yahshua is prophesying in this that the Gentiles will tread the holy city underfoot until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. We are still in that time of the Gentiles. Verse 2 says they will tread the holy city, which is in Jerusalem, underfoot for 42 months. In those 42 months, we also see the two witnesses. Now understand, 42 months is the midway part of the Great Tribulation. The Tribulation is 7 years. Or 84 months. Half of that is 42. The two witnesses are given power for 1260 days. 1260 divided by 30 days, 30 days being one month, equals 42. 42 months. The witnesses are given power for the first half of the Great Tribulation. They will not appear until it has started. The two witnesses are one of those topics that is often discussed. It's a hot topic. It seems I'm always hearing about people speaking about these two witnesses being here now. Another majority says that these two witnesses will be either Moses, Enoch, or Elijah. Let me just say that I don't know. They could be true, or they could also not be true. That's because the word does not clearly say so. We should examine what we know from scripture and keep our speculations to a minimum. At least in regard to teaching on them as absolutes. Let's examine what we know about the two witnesses. 1. They will prophesy for 1260 days with astounding power, which means that they will be there during the other judgments. 2. They were clothed in sackcloth. What is sackcloth? It is a very coarse fabric usually made from goat's hair. It was mostly worn as a token of mourning by the Israelites, which means the witnesses are mourning for the unrepentant world to which they are prophesying. 3. They are described as two olive trees and two lampstands. This links them to the two anointed ones in the vision of Zechariah in Zechariah chapter 4. In verse 14 of Zechariah chapter 4 he says, So he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the adun of the whole earth. Read the full chapter for more understanding. Now the two anointed ones in Zechariah are Zerubbabel and Joshua the priest. But the linking principle of understanding with these witnesses and the ones from Zechariah is that their testimony to the truth is not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. See Zechariah chapter 4. Number 4. The two witnesses had the authority to prevent rain during their times of prophecy and turn water into blood. This is one reason why these two witnesses are likened to both Elijah and Moses because Elijah caused it not to rain for three and a half years, and Moses turned water into blood in Egypt. 
They also say this because they appeared with Yahshua on the Mount of Transfiguration in Luke chapter 9, verses 29 through 32. So these are very good reasons why they could be Moses and Elijah. I just don't teach on it because I don't know for sure because scripture has not provided that clarity. Number five, after their 42 months of prophesying are done, the Antichrist will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. This will be another reason why the world will love this Antichrist. The world will try to shut these two witnesses down and stop them from being heard, but their power will no doubt gain massive worldwide attention, especially when all the other bad things are happening and the world is seeking people to blame. They will try to shut these witnesses down, but will be unsuccessful. But the Antichrist who knows what authority is given to him will not strike these men until his time has been granted. He will kill them in the same city where Yahshua was put to death. Then three and a half days later, they are resurrected and ascend to heaven, and their many enemies will see them. Then an earthquake happens, and 10% of Jerusalem is destroyed, and 7,000 people were killed. This all takes place in Jerusalem. What happens with the witnesses is about Jerusalem. Chapter 11 is speaking about what is happening in Jerusalem. My advice when trying to understand the witnesses and when they come is not to stress over it. When the two witnesses come, all believers will know for sure. The second woe was now passed. The second woe included what happened in the sixth trumpet in chapter 9 as well. The rest of the chapter is about praising Elohim because he is taking his wrath and his judgment is about to come. This is what the martyrs in chapter 6 were praying for, but we will see it is not completed until we get to chapter 20. The rest of this chapter is just praising the Father who is worthy to be praised. Let's go to chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to Elohim and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by Elohim, that they should feed her 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our Elohim day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he has been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, this is another big topic of discussion, the Revelation 12 sign. I speak on this cautiously because there are so many different teachings on this sign, and a lot of them make a lot of sense. It's one of those topics that are highly discussed because the woman and the child bear many similarities to important roles in the scriptures. It's just one of those things that I could teach 
than someone else could teach, and there's no way to know which one of us is right, or if even both of us are wrong. But I will speak on what I feel has been given to me. This woman who bears the child is Israel. That's why she has the garland of 12 stars. The male child that she gave birth to is of course Yahshua. That's why verse 5 says he is a male child who will rule all nations with a rod of iron. And later her child was caught to Elohim and his throne. The fiery red dragon is told to be Satan in verse 9. Verse 9 is a very important verse to provide understanding. It says, That serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. We must understand how far his influence reaches. So many ignore him and his influence, and it's often because they ignore this verse. Satan deceives the whole world. Now the third of the stars that his tail drew from heaven must be the fallen angels that went with him out of heaven. There is a lot going on in this chapter. When the dragon was cast to the earth, he starts to persecute Israel. But when he is not able to destroy Israel, he goes against the rest of her offspring, which follow the commandments of Elohim and had a testimony of the Messiah. It's not clear when this all is occurring. If this is just a reenactment of how Satan was cast out of heaven, or does he actually get cast out during the tribulation? So for me personally, this is not a chapter in Revelation that provides me with much clarity or understanding. This was a sign in heaven, which means that we would not see this. But what we must never forget is that this dragon has made himself an enemy against Elohim, and we must be on guard at all times for its plots. The truth of Revelation 12 is showing the conflict that we have with Satan and that he seeks to come against us. When I read the book of Revelation, there are things that I focus on and things I wait for revelation for. I recommend you doing the same as well. This is a reason why so many people do not read this book. Many people believe there are so many things that they do not understand, that they should just stay away from the book altogether. Don't ever take that approach. Read it and let the Holy Spirit guide you. He may make something clear that you never expected. The next chapter is an important chapter in this book, so we will discuss it in the next part. The Great Tribulation is a very bad time for the earth. Our only refuge is in our Savior, our Messiah, Yahshua. Stay vigilant and continue strong in the way. These events are approaching. There's nothing you can do about it. But for a believer, that should not bring fear, but anticipation for our redemption. Continue to fight the good fight. Be strong and be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank all of you who support this ministry. Your contributions truly bless me. I'm truly thankful for your support. Thank you for listening to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.